Hi there, welcome to Exam AZ 900, Microsoft Azure Fundamental Study Guide. This is episode 40, entitled the Microsoft Privacy Statement and the Cloud Adoption Framework. Tim Warner here, I'm happy to be your instructor. Our objective from the Exam AZ 900 Microsoft Azure Fundamentals Objective Domain starts with Describe Identity, Governance, Privacy, and Compliance Features. We then drill into Describe Privacy and Compliance Resources, and our specific skill is Describe the Purpose of the Microsoft Privacy Statement and the Cloud Adoption Framework. Go to timw.info forward slash az900sg for the study guide table of contents. Cloud computing, specifically public cloud computing, and even more specifically Microsoft Azure, involves trust between us and Microsoft, the provider. Recall, for example, something we've discussed earlier in the study guide, the shared responsibility model. We see on the right, with an attribution URL, the mapping of responsibility between Microsoft and the customer from one extreme where all of your IT infrastructure runs on-premises all the way to the other in a software-as-a-service deployment model where most of the environment is held and maintained by the cloud provider. We're talking about trusting the cloud provider with our data and also establishing data ownership. Just because you're storing your personal or professional data or both in the Microsoft Azure cloud, that doesn't mean Microsoft owns the data, quite the opposite. We've seen a trend in Microsoft Azure over the last couple years from Microsoft managed encryption keys to customer managed keys. That's one example. Another is data sovereignty, where you choose the region or regions where you deploy your services and you store your data. This helps you keep in compliance with any organizational or governmental regulations that you're subject to. The Microsoft Privacy Statement is where Microsoft is very transparent on their public website, and they explain the personal data of yours that Microsoft processes, how they process your data, and why they process your data. The long story short, or the so-called Cliff's Notes version, is that Microsoft believes that your data is yours, and Microsoft is committed to being transparent every time they need to collect your data. They'll tell you exactly what they're collecting, why they need it, and what they'll do. The Cloud Adoption Framework, or CAF, is a collection of proven practices that have been put together. They're all about cloud journey. We're talking migration to the cloud and ultimately working in the cloud. And these proven practices were developed over years by a number of people and groups. We're talking Microsoft partners who have contributed their experience working as cloud solution architects and cloud solution providers. Microsoft itself has a fleet of cloud solution architects, and all of that experience has been distilled into this framework, and it's freely available for you to study. Isn't that awesome? You might have heard the term dogfooding. Microsoft has dogfooded their own software since the beginning, and what that means is that Microsoft uses their own software. They run their own services on Azure, and they subscribe to the cloud adoption framework themselves when they're deploying their own cloud infrastructure internally. This is a useful flowchart that, in a way, sums up the top-line elements of the cloud adoption framework. Again, you see in the lower left an attribution. And as usual, after the demo, I'll give you some pointers for additional learning resources. But the top row here deals with migration, doesn't it? Where you're defining your strategy. What exactly is behind your desire to move to Microsoft Azure? There are, of course, planning, readiness assessments. There's looking at what the cloud has to offer and preparing what's called landing zones. Landing zones represent the target cloud environment for whatever workload, services, machines, applications that you're migrating. There's the migration and adoption process. And then the second row talks about ongoing governance and management of your cloud infrastructure. It's really quite nicely architected, no pun intended. Now let me jump into a brief demo and show you how it works. Here is the Microsoft Privacy Statement. We can see that the short URL is privacy.microsoft.com and that it was last updated in June 2020, which means that this is a living document. We've seen thus far in this study guide that the Azure documentation, that corpus is living. In fact, it's open source and GitHub so that we can all contribute. Of course, this is a closed source document, but Microsoft does in fact change it over time. You can see this what's new. If I open that in another tab, that shows you the specific change history of the document. And as I told you, if we look at the table of contents here, I'm not going to read this. I'll leave it to you as a homework assignment to check this out. 
but it goes through specifically how they use your personal data, et cetera. And then when you get down toward the bottom, we've got product specific details and you'll want to look under enterprise and developer products. And then it gets into Azure and Office 365 with the online services. Now, if you're thinking, Tim, how is this going to show up on the exam? Am I going to have to memorize this? The answer is absolutely not. All you have to know is understand what this is, that Microsoft Privacy Statement is a website that describes in detail Microsoft's stance towards your data, your privacy, and what they do with data of yours that they collect. The other thing I wanted to show you is the cloud adoption framework. After this demo, I'll give you the link to the CAF homepage. I wanted to go back into the Azure portal, and this should be especially nice if you're coming from the previous lesson on Azure Blueprints. Let me open up the Azure Blueprints blade, and if I go on over to Blueprint Definitions, I've loaded up one of the sample Blueprint templates, the one called Cloud Adoption framework and I want you to just take a look at some of the artifacts that are included it's pretty impressive let me shrink up the top here and first of all we've got a whole bunch of Azure policy coming in at the subscription scope from setting up monitoring in Azure Security Center to governance of all kinds data sovereignty using Azure policy to ensure that your colleagues and you only deploy to regions or Azure locations that are authorized what are some resource types that you are, for whatever reason, security, cost, management, you want to expressly forbid any of your colleagues from creating? To keep cost in mind, you may want to choose to allow only certain storage account stock keeping units. Same with virtual machine sizes. I've mentioned in the past, and if you've been following the study guide sequentially, that taxonomic tags can get out of hand quickly unless you have a governance strategy in place. And I mentioned that Azure Policy is an excellent solution for that. And here we're seeing that in combining those governance methods into an Azure Blueprint, you can, in one fell swoop or in a centralized manner, you can do the full governance lifecycle through one proverbial pane of glass. Sorry to throw all the cliches at you, but it's the best I can do. <laughs> Learning resources. I have quite a few for you. First, the Microsoft Privacy Statement itself. I created a shortcut URL, timw.info forward slash MPS1 to read it yourself. Two, change history of the Microsoft Privacy Statement. This again speaks to Microsoft's transparency, timw.info forward slash MPS2. Privacy at Microsoft is a related service where you can get even more detail beyond what's in the privacy statement. That's timw.info forward slash MPS3. And lastly, the Cloud Adoption Framework homepage at timw.info forward slash MPS4. Excellent. Another episode down. Well, we're really heading into the final stretch here, so I hope you're as excited as I am. The next episode of this series is going to focus on the Microsoft Trust Center. In the meantime, you can follow me on Twitter. I'm Tech Trainer Tim. Check out my Pluralsight courses at timw.info forward slash ps or visit my website, techtrainertim.com. Thanks for everything. I'll see you in the next lesson. Later.